Hello and welcome to B8 TechWorks. Today we are going to look at how we can be able to implement the data grid because I feel data grid is very important especially if you want to display a large data. So for example here we have done uh, data for the student here you can see the ID you can see the first name here the last name age and then we have grade. So data grid is very important because also it does for you like pagination if you come to the bottom right here you can be able to see we have pagination and also you can show different columns or different entries per page or a certain number of entries per page for example you can show 25 entries per page 50 50 entries per page and 100 uh, per page that is so that is very important when it comes to data grid because that means that it it give you like a pagination out of the box the other thing that you can do with the data grid is that for example you can come here and uh, you can do sorting by ascending and also descending so if i do sort by ascending you can be able to see that a name here are being sorted by ascending also here i can be able to do the same every column i can do by ascending or descending something of the sort so here also if i do that you can be able to see that we can be able to sort by descending the other thing is that i can be able to filter here using a certain name for example let us filter for a name like michael so i can just search for michael here and let's see the entry that has michael you can see you can be able to search using the now because now we we need to do that also let me first of all load here so now i want us to implement the data grid and uh, in this video also i'm using like uh, data that i have already generated here you can see using charge gpt you can see with this data that we have generated here this data here uh, which we have generated for student using ChatGPT, but also I'm going to show you also how you can be able to also use the data that I'm fetching from database so that we can be able also to see how to display the data that is live from the database. So before we continue, kindly consider subscribing and liking this video and then we dive deep into the tutorial now. So oh, if already you have uh, subscribed and like this video so let's get into the tutorial so the first thing that i want you guys to do is that i want uh, i want you to install the install the vate uh, or if you don't have it and also because we are going to use vit we can now be able to install react app using vit here because vit is very very easy to manage our application and to do other things like running the application and also we'll be able to run up to build this application in an easier way so the other thing is that in this project also we are going to use tailwind uh, css which is very very important and uh, nowadays you find that Tailwind CSS is most commonly so we are going to use that so here I have a documentation for how you can do this so the first thing that you need to do is npm create and then you have write at latest my and then the project name here you can add any name that you want for your uh, project you can call it data grid and also you can add other things like this dashes here and then template react and then you need to cd into your project the other thing is that you also need to come here and run this command here and then here also we can do npx tailwind and then init dash p so after that we need to search for this file here and uh, let me show you in this project so we have this file that will be generated here when you run those commands we have this part here you need to add this part here or also you can be able to also you can just copy everything inside here and uh, and then remove everything here and paste that information here if you don't want to do that you will find this uh, file here but in inside here the content it would be an empty array so you can just add this index.html and also this uh, source here and then and then you can using this forward slash here and then select all that means the asterisk here and then dot js and then any file that is uh js ts jsx or tsx 
will be able to be configured using CSS. That is, we can be able to use CSS. The last thing that you need to do according to the documentation here, you need to come into index.css and add this on top of that page. You need to add this Tailwind base, Tailwind components here. And then after that, now you can be able to run now the project. So that's what I've done. So if you come here and check for index.css, let me see this index.css here, you can be able to see here, we have added this uh, Tailwind base here, Tailwind components, Tailwind utilities. And that's how we have added them to be able to to be able to use now tailwind so the other thing that i want you guys to do is i want you to remove everything inside here so for, first of all let me show you how i'm running this application so if you come here into the terminal you can be able to see that i have done the the command the last command here and then i have done npm run dev and if you come here into this but you'll be able to see that this application is now running here. And you can see we have this uh, data here or this part that is showing us the vid and then react and then vid plus react of which if you click here, it will be a counter that is, uh, but we need to remove all of this because this is a uh, data that is um, just for showing us that the project is running. So what we are going to do is that, first of all, I'm going to remove everything down here from here now from the the code that we have added up there for css until here so this page for index.css what you need to leave here is just this part that we have added here so and then the other thing is that you need to come here into app.css and then you can be able to remove everything like that and then inside here in this app.jx you need to remove these logos here and also app.css you need to remove this uh, state here and also you can remove this we are going to remove almost everything and then in anything inside here we are going to remove it because we are not going to need it and then now we can format this i'm formatting using a plugin that is called prettier so you can use prettier you can look for pretty and use it so here i think i can remove fragments here and what I'll do is that I can use that uh, these uh, brackets here. And uh, the other thing is now I can use the div here. Let me use div like that. And let me first of all see how the application looks. So you can see we have now a blank bracket, uh, blank application. So we're going to code here now. So from here now I can be able to first of all let me try and. Uh, maybe see if the, it is working so i can just say hello so hello like that and then when we save here we can be able to see hello here so meaning that is working the way we want so the other thing that i need to do is now i'm going to install the data grid and we are going to use this uh, package that is called mux muix here you can be able to see it how uh, in this documentation here so what you can do is that you can come into google and what you need to search let me show you how i searched for this data grid so you can write something like data grid mui and uh, it will be the first website here so click on this react uh, data grid so you can use mui for other things like uh, maybe the charts and i'm going to show you that in data videos so you can see it is taking you direct to the documentation for data grid so the first thing that you need to do is that i'm going to to come here let me show you where i want to to do something here so you can see the overview so you can see the data grid how it looks and uh, everything so what i need to do is that i need to come here to get started so when you come here to get started you'll be able to see how you need to install this package so the first thing that we need to do is to do npm install and then at umi and then x data grid so copy that and then in the folder of this project here you can open the terminal so we can open the new terminal here 
and uh, let me show you how to install it so here we can paste the the command and then we wait it uh, we wait as it is installing so the other thing is that we need also remember to also include this one also this for this that we calling uh, react yeah at emotion react at emotion style because right here you can see the data grid package has a peer dependency on at umi material if you are not already using it in your project you can install it with now this the nini the npm install because here also you can be able to see yarn and uh, if you are using yarn also you can use yarn add and also here you can use add here if you are using yarn also you can do that so let me see if we, are, we have installed it so it is completing here so npm uh, at umi so it is still installing so let me copy this this uh, termin here command this command here so let me copy it so you are going to install this also and the last thing that you need to do is to install the style engine because MUI works with style engine so we have this that we are calling material UI uh, is using emotion as a styling engine by default if you want if you want to use styled components here instead run this now you can be able to see also you can install this but i think you can also you can either install this or maybe you can just install one of these at your my material emotion or maybe this one but it's a good practice if you install both of them so let us see if it has finished installing yes you can see it has finished installing so let us install this uh, at Im material at emotion react so the other thing that we need to install now is the style engine so i can copy this and then let us wait here so uh, it is still installing but this is it won't take a long time so you have uh, go back here now also you can see how to import it and then how to use it so the first thing that you need is to have this uh do uh, rows here and you can see even if you are using uh, typescript you can be able to add the data type here so the data types of rows is grid rows prop and also the data grid for columns here is grid call def here that is an array that is so let us see if it has finished installing yes so let us install this that we are calling mui styled engine so let us see also how to use it so the first thing that you need is to import it so i'm going to import it and then use it here so i'm going to use it here so i'm adding it there so the other thing now uh, we can do now is that we are going to see how we can be able to use it but first of all let me style my application because we are going to use a uh, style or what we are calling we are going to use this uh, style uh, tailwind css that is and here the first thing that i can i can create here a class name and if you know about tailwind tailwind is very easy so i'm going to start by adding main height screen like that and then the other thing is i'm going to add flex but if you want to use pure css you can do that also so i'm going to say flex uh, flex direction to be column and the other thing is we need to do justify con justify center or justify content center and also i can add items item center and also the other thing is can give it a padding of eight here so if you want to know the, the representation already you can be able to hover over that and you can see the padding is two rem here also you can be able to see here item center align item center the representation of tailwind css into pure css so here i can be able now to add now h2 yeah we can have a h2 here that we are going to call it data grid so data grid like that and then here we can style it so i think we can call it data grid data that makes sense 
and here we can be able to style this so we have class we can have class name here and uh, we can say text this one is front is what we are calling font so 2xl like that and then we have font semi bold you can be able to see it here and the other thing that we can do is also uh, actually that is okay i think we don't have to style anything else there so if i save that and uh, come here you can see data grid data here so the other thing that we can do is now have the other part that holds our data grid so we have this part here and uh, you can do class name like that and inside here we can be able to do something like uh, max and then w screen like that and then the other thing that we can do actually this one should be having a large here and also the other thing that we can do is to give it a width full and also we can do um, uh, something like padding of 8 uh, here uh, which is 2RAM so we are going to use rounded large here like that so that is it uh, now the other thing is we can be able now to use data grid inside here now so let us save this and now go to documentation again so we have this documentation and now you can see how you can use it here so the first thing that i need to do is to actually copy this these two here we have row rows and then we have columns so i'm going to copy them here so let me copy them and then we are going to use them here before you can be able to see here you are using them before this app uh, here so before the app function so i'm going to paste it up there and you can be able to see we have like this here it give us like um, you can see it is giving us like this error here because we are not using typescript if you are using typescript it won't have any problem so because we are not using typescript then we can remove that and here also we can remove this because we are not going we are not using typescript so you can see we have rows here and uh, columns the other thing is now we can come here and take this data grid and uh, it has these rows here which we give it the rows up here we give it columns which are these columns here so the rows is the data so remember that and uh, columns is just the the columns like the name so if i save here let me save this so or let me format so when i format this and then i save and then come back here you can be able to see now we have this data grid and you can see all the functionality so you can see how easy it is to use data grid data here so now the other thing that i want to is to we create a data that at least look like a real world data so i had used ChatGPT here to generate that so we can see for like rows here you can use this data that i generated using ChatGPT. so i'm going to replace rows here so let me remove these rows here like that paste the data there and uh, actually i don't know why we are having like all this problem i know so i'm going to remove just the data here because i had copied only the data so you can see how it looks and right now if i try and save you won't be able to see the entries in our application so you can see we just have data but you can see we have columns and uh, and, and the column one and then column two but we don't have uh, we don't have any other data here so to show that data we need to include it into our columns here we need to include it in our columns because you can see here in our columns only this field here that we are showing column one and column two so let us include that the other data here in our columns so let me do this so i'm going to copy so let me copy this 
here this column so i'm going to copy all of it like that and then inside here i can also be able to copy this like that and then now if i save this and then come back here can be able to see we don't we are not able to see the data because we don't have like uh, we have not represented it like the first name the last name age and grade so what i'm going to do is there's a mistake that i have done here and i want to correct it so what i'll do is that here because you can see here we don't have the data here you can be able to see here because remember here in our rows here this should correspond like this the data here id should correspond with the this field here id also here uh, for the uh, here in our rows here also we need to have like first name so that it correspond here and uh, i copied the data that was not the, the data that I, I was intending so i'm going to just look for this data here you can be able to see this data so let me copy it like that and then i'm going to paste it here inside the rows so i'm going to paste this here like that so we have now be able to added that rows here so like that so you can see how easy it is so because now i have added this let me show you something now so here to our application you can be able to see now we have the data here and there is nothing else that we need to do now we can be able to filter the data out of the box we can be able to do the pagination already pagination have been done to us uh, we have last name here that we already has been uh, added and we can do the sorting by ascending filtering actually also we can hide the column if you don't want and then if you reload here you can be able to see that column here so you can do pretty much everything here using this data so you can see how easy it is to use data grid if you have an application that you have a lot of data because it will do much of uh, work for you like filtering searching also the pagination so the other thing that i need to do now is that i need to fetch the data from my backend so we have a backend running here because in a previous project i had created in our shift taking application here i had uh, created a backend and if you want to go back and uh, learn about this project here that i did for shift taking you can go back and uh, see uh, those uh, shift taking application that i built a full stack one in man using man stack so i'm going to use the back end of that application to show the data here so i'm going to come here and uh, the first thing that i need to do i'm going to create a state here so i'm going to use const here we have data i'm going to call it the data or even i can call them the shifts because it's a database of shifts so we can also do set data here and uh, let me let me go back here so set data like that so here we need to use use state use state here like that and then here we can be able to initialize this as, as empty array so now the other thing that uh, actually make sure that you have imported this use state you can see it here so i'm going also to use use effect to fetch the data so use use effect here and uh, use effect is a function that has two argument the first one is a function here so like that and then here we can have an uh, uh, array that is as the one that is checks for dependency so we have this uh, that we are we have the uh, with we have the use effect so i'm going to use now the use effect here and uh, to fetch the data so the first thing that we need to do here also i need to import let me import the axios package so that we can fetch the data using it so axios here so i'm going to import okay npm install 
Axios, like that is just a small package that will help us to fetch the data. So as it is fetching data, let us create the function here. So we are going to get now the, so to have the const get the shifts. So get shifts like that. So also the other thing is you can have here a sync like that. And then we can call that function here, get shifts, get shifts like that. So here this one is a sync, a sync like that. So we have that. And um, the other thing that we need to do is that here, inside here now, we can be able to fetch the data. So let's see, we have already installed the Axios, as you can see down here. So now we can be able to do the fetching of which we can do const rest here and then we can say await and then using axios here uh, we are going to import axios i have not imported axios so axios import axios like that so if you come up here you can be able to see axios it is here we have imported it so the other thing is now we have to now get the shifts so using that uh, get method so here we can be able now to include the http and then here is a localhost the api is in localhost and then here we let's see it is running on port running on port 8800 so include that 8800 and then we can have api version 1 and then we can have shifts like that so that is how you can be able to fetch it so here we can use set now data set data and then we can take response dot data like that so first of all let me console log the data here so console log dot data to see if I can get I'm getting the data. So here we have this data. So console log the data and then let me see here in my application if I can be able to get that data. So let me see in console here. You can be able to see that data. So we have this part here. Yeah, you can be able to see already here we have the shift that we are fetching from our database. So there are five and uh, here you can be able to see actually how they have we have um, we have amount we have distance we have duration we have uh, location and things like that so this one are the ones that we need to include in our in our column and uh, let me see the id do we have the id here so yes we have the id we have the type here we have like uh we have much pretty much everything so what are we what we are going to do is that here we are going to you can see we have distance we have the amount we have everything so let me see we have the id you can be able to see the id here so that's how how we need to do now we come here into our application and uh, because now we can be able to fetch we can be able also to make sure that let me see let us change now from the id here it should be underscore id because it should correspond with the data that is coming so for example here you can see we have underscore id we have also other things like a client we can be able to see the client here so we have client so let us add here client uh, we have also let me see other things we have client and then we have date date and distance uh, we have date we have date distance distance here no actually i can add okay distance it's okay and then also i can add other thing like uh, let me see we have location also we have location and uh, i think that's only things that i'm going to include here so location and also i have notes 
so I can include even the notes here. So I'm going to copy this here. So let me add the notes here. So we have the notes here. We have the notes like that. And uh, here we can add the notes like that. Notes. And if we try now to be able to, if we try and try getting this here, you can see we cannot also be able to display that information here. So let me check here because we have columns here. Also, we need to change here now to things like client. Like that, we have to have date. We can have date. Uh, we have distance here distance we have grade uh, we have location here so that this is the header name of the, or the table and the other thing here is the notes so we can have notes here so we have notes here also and remember also i'm going to include the code of this uh, project here in the description of this video so you can look at the github and also remember to leave a star if uh, you find this information helpful so i'm going to push this uh, information into my my github and then i will add that link into the description of this video so you can check the code there so here you can see how it looks so if you come here you can be able to see uh, it has changed to current date and distance so now the other thing that we can do is that we can come here into data grid now and now rather than showing now the rows we can show the data like that but i don't think it will work because there is some configurations that we need to do so here if you try to do that you can be able to see we cannot even be able to see and uh, if you scroll down you'll be able to see we have this uh, very wrong error here so what we need to do is that we are going to come back here and we can do some changes, uh, very small changes here. So because we have already rows as our data. So the other thing that let me show you. The other thing that we need to do is that because we have the data that is coming from our database, then we need to add here. We need to add something else. We need to add uh, like uh, get you can see get row id so you can see get row id here because it needs to have that when you're fetching your data from the back end so get the row id here and you can come here and uh, add row and then this one it need to you need to get a row dot for me my data because is from mongodb we use dot underscore id it is not dot id so if i do this so let me let me save on this and then if i try to to do that now you can be able to see we have the data that is being displayed here so you can see if you're using the demi data from our from your machine then it is different from fetching also the data from your backend it we do different things so also, also there's other things that you can do like disable you can do other options here like disable select disable select yeah you can do disable selection actually this is you can see this one the first one here disable row selection on click here and also you can do other things like check check box selection like that so that are all the things that you can also be able to to do here so now that's okay now that's how now you'll be able to use data grid and uh, for example here because we are using our data from our backend the other thing is that also you can be able to do other things like maybe you can come here and uh, maybe sort also from your backend and also you can do other things like searching you can be able to search and because here also you cannot you can come here and uh, do filter and then try and search and you can see already it is searching 
so like that so you can see how easy it is to use data grid you can use data grid even with the data the data that from the database so that is it i wanted to show you here so let's end the video here because i don't want this video to be long have a great day and also remember to like and also subscribe this video and turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified the next time that i upload a new video see you in the next video ha have a great day